Hello, this is the Eradicator, and today uh, we are going to check out uh, some of the uh, you know, highlights of uh, Around the Verse, pretty much all of, all of the latest Around the Verse. Uh, we're going to check out uh, what they're talking about today. Uh, it's probably going to talk about sounds, from what I'm seeing here, the sound of Fury. Uh, pretty awesome. This pretty also uh, awesome looks of... Uh, of the of the Hulk, but anyway, uh, let's get started with Aaron Karen Davis and uh, and Sean Tracy. Awesome. Flight model with looks at improvements to ship AI and audio. Uh, doesn't seem to be uh, a lot of fluff today. Very interesting. They look more serious, which is uh, a nice approach. I like you know no bullshit approach. Uh, that's what I uh, I like. Um, you know, in these, you know, community videos, uh, and also seems like we're going to have the whole program here on the side. Um, yeah, yeah, good, good start. Let's continue. But first, let's check out a recent ship-centric community skirmish. Our community continually... <gasps> oh, yeah. On showing star citizens yeah, I've seen, I've seen this video. Uh, pretty impressive, actually. With this 42-person Gladius battle. It's really cool stuff. I don't know about you, Sean, but I'm, I really get inspired whenever I see those videos. Right? Yeah, that's like, a good choice today. Here, absolutely. I even, uh, I think I even made a response to Chris. Uh, I guess we can all just pack up and go home now. Yeah. Because, you know, they're going to they're gonna put together these uh, really exciting things. And coming from a modding background myself, I really love the fact that the community yeah. kind of sets up some really exciting events for themselves. And it gives us tons of ideas. Yeah. Is that? And, and by us, you know. Yeah, yeah. Chris. <laughs> Is that is that is that so? Is that what we saw there? Something that only you could do in three four three, or is it like you know, like when when did was that? That's a very good question, and I, I can see where uh, Eric is going here. Um, it is not something that we could have done in the past, and definitely OCS. I wouldn't see three point four point three, but three point three uh, onwards. Uh, before that, there was just no way uh, we could have done something like that because. You know, they the frames were not not just good enough, and it was just so you know resource consuming. But yeah, yeah no. we could probably have put that many ships together, I think, in earlier releases. But whether or not that would have been still really playable, or whether you would have had rubber banding things going on, just having that many entities uh, right in the vicinity of each other and doing you know the formation flying yeah. around the different hills and things like that, that would have been a lot harder to do in early releases. But now that we've been able to kind of knock down some of these performance hurdles yeah. uh i think we've been able to uh, uh really give them the ability to do this so, so. totally that's super cool over the yeah, it's actually uh true that it's now when when there were lots of players at the same place i'm thinking about in, in the past like uh Levski, for example or even at the very beginning of ocs in lorville uh there used to be a lot of i wouldn't say like but yeah rubber banding very low frame rates um now ocs is kicking and is, you know, is working quite well and uh, i wouldn't be surprised in if in i wouldn't say in the future but in the near future but if in the future we can see some of the player accounts gradually increasing um because you know this you know ocs really opens up a lot of possibilities now there's the server there are the servers issues on the other side but if they can manage to find find a way to manage to get the servers to be a bit more stable uh, i'm i'm not seeing why it's what it would be a possibility to let's say raise the player cap all the way to 64 right now it's just 50 uh why not 64 the games have been doing that for decades now so um why not star citizen the past few weeks, ATV has been looking at different aspects of the new flight model in development. That's right, and soon players will get to begin their training in this improved flight experience. Oh yeah. But did you know our AI pilots have to be retrained to its specifications as well? Yes, we've seen that. That's why they haven't been working on the AI for quite some time now in the old uh, model. Because, you know, why working on AI uh, with the old model if, if you've got a new model coming up? So let's spend all the resources uh, for that. So it's I'm pretty excited to see what's going to come up next here. Here's Andre Becky with more. Over the last few months, the ship AI department uh, has focused on two primary topics. The first one was porting all the existing behaviors for ships into IFCS 2.0. When the IFCS system switched from 1.0 to oh, the scenario now commander changed how you request certain movements from the ships. It doesn't matter if that's a player or, or if that's the AI, but for the player, that's mostly on the teams that do the controls, but for the AI, it is on us. So when a ship, an AI ship, decides to fly from A to B, it requests different kinds of things from the IFCS. Mm -hmm. So we had to change the way it phrases those requests in order to get to the point it wants to go to. 
there were two aspects to this. The first one was the code side, so things like fly to a position or take off or defend an area needed to be converted oh, even under the take hood off. Yeah. to use new type of interface that IFCS 2.0 provides. So that's why we don't we, we don't see uh, I just realized that guys that's why we don't see any of the AI uh, going in and out of Lorville, for example, which is something that they used to show before, simply because they're waiting for the new flight model. Of course, they're not going to implement that in the old flight model if the new one's completely different. This would be a waste of time. The other part was on the balancing side, since the combat is now a lot more momentum driven, the parameters had to be tweaked so the ships behave properly. The other big topic was gunships. Oh. Since we were touching the gunship behavior anyway, we decided to give this a makeover. For those who've seen my videos, sometimes I do ECN missions which involve fighting constellations like here, and they're just way too easy to kill. Just try to strafe, go to a dead end, and they're just not moving so much. They're trying their best to kill you, but it's really very, uh, very buggy. So I cannot wait to see um, how they're pulling this out here. So gunships for us are ships that are heavier than the average fighter, and the, the pretty major part of the damage is uh, coming from turrets so there were several goals for us well the so Connie can do a lot of damage too with the front guns in a pretty realistic manner and we also want them to play quite differently from fighters and it was also important to us that they play to their strengths so the new behavior is that they are going to circle the target at a medium distance roughly 400 meters Oh, that's exactly how it should be done. That's right. To hit reliably, but it's still far enough that you can't easily get on their tails. And then they will try to bring the maximum so, number of turrets to bear. On so this is going to require much more skills on on a, on the pilot's end, uh, because as you can see, instead of trying to trying to face your assailant, you're just going to have to follow a trajectory based on where your assailant is located and try to go around in circle to give your turrets optimum optimum visibility uh, very interesting gameplay I, I cannot wait to see how the uh, AI there is going to pull that in real conditions it looks very promising here they will also do a frontal assault run and they will use their front facing weapons and also missiles when the player is fighting gunship the critical importance is that he gets into the gunship blind spot to make sure it's outside of all the firing arcs whereas if he's fighting against a fighter it's more important to stay on the fighter's tail because the fighter's weapons are usually all facing forwards. So he has to stay on the tail, which is quite difficult since fighters are very agile. But for the gunship, the tail could very well be a very uh, dangerous spot mm. to be in if it has rare turrets. So on that means you need to you need to ad adapt your strategy based on your enemy, which is again the way it should be. It's something that we've been lacking in the game for quite some time. I'm glad they are pr bringing everything back like that. Uh, the very old flight model was actually quite good. Uh, the, yeah, it's just I don't know why they decided to go uh, full uh, six degrees of freedom like that, um, and it, it just we broke everything. On two main things. The yeah. very first task we'll do Let's hope that they're gonna get it right this time. Fun to shoot at after an attack run. So once they're done attacking you and they are breaking away. We want to give the player more opportunity to get onto their tail, chase them. And chasing them will become progressively harder the longer you are on the tail. And if you decide to uh, shoot them and you actually manage to get some hits in, they will try to become more and more aggressive with their efforts to shake you off. So oh. they will present themselves to some degree for you to get hits in, but you will have to work for it. So to sum it all up, gunships are a lot more dangerous than before and they take a lot more brains to beat. Fighters are gonna be a lot more agile and momentum driven uh, under IFCS 2.0 and will enable your players to get into their tail and get Hollywood style moments out of it. And we can't wait for the backers to get their hands on it. So in other words, the, the days of making easy money doing all these bounty hunter missions is soon to be over. Well, you know, good things got to come to an end. Well, these are not good things. Uh, this is probably going to be much better. But uh, let's just uh, keep that in mind, guys. That, um, yeah, the, the easiest way to make money in the future is going to be trade. It's always going to be trade in every game. Every space game is trade. But if you want to have the fun part, of course, fighting is going to be uh, what it's going to be all about. 
Along with controls and systems, the entire ship audio experience is being overhauled as part of the new flight model. Let's go to the audio team for more. We've been looking to rework the ship audio engine for quite a while now, as the system that we had, while it was great at the time, hasn't really scaled with the game. And it doesn't take advantage of some of our features, such as automatic inheritance inside DataForge. It's quite restrictive as a sound designer as well, because we could only play sound. That's interesting, because it's really been a long time we haven't hear, heard about sound. Uh, so let's see what they're going to do. Detail and accuracy in where the sounds are on the ship, as well as allowing us to bring in the audio vibration component and the environment feedback component to give the players even more feedback on what their ship's doing and the state it's in. So this is the Gladius after being set up with the new audio systems. In the new system, we can place emitters that represent the movement of the ship anywhere on the ship itself, rather than being restricted to the thrusters themselves, as in the old system. This is oh. useful for properly placing the sounds of additional systems that will produce sound when the ship is moving. All of these sounds are modulated by different parameters coming from the IFCS, so spreading the emitters throughout the ship in a low-friendly way like this results in a much more dynamic and believable ship soundscape. I don't know what you guys, if, if you guys heard all these slides and the very tiny little details when that ship was moving. It made me think of how uh, how Elite Dangerous sounds. Elite Dangerous also has some fantastic sound um, in terms, you know, to uh, ship flight. Uh, and, you know, these the, these sounds that they were displaying here with how the ship was moving made me, sound of, made me think of... Uh, how Elite Dangerous ship sounds uh, sound uh, when you are moving, you know, these maneuvers as well. well. Has benefits for stereo it's a good direction People going to. Headphones or surround sound systems should hear massive increases in positional believability and detail. Because of the more advanced audio features in the new ship audio system, we can also modulate the sounds of ships over long journeys to represent the sound of the ship settling into a certain cruise speed. So, because of the improvements to the Truster audio system. We now actually have oh. sounds on the maneuvering. Oh yeah, it's much deeper. On most ships, which we used to avoid, as we didn't have the audio features to properly work with the IFCS thrust output, which tended to be quite spiky, which is not very useful for audio. So now, if we line the ship up with Damar, we can hear these working. Now, guys, I I, I, I want to make a point here. Now, of, of course, if if you guys have not been uh, playing as regularly Star Citizen, you're not really used to. Um, to the game, Th these are differences that you probably won't hear. Uh, and I, as a player who, who who is playing, you know, every day, I've been playing every day for for years. Um, I can hear all the difference they're impl implementing, all the little extra details they're implementing, and I can tell that this is going to be much, much, much more immersive than what it is today. Right now, it is already quite immersive and it feels believable, uh, but all these details is going to be basically um, th the details of sound quality they are going to implement here. I can see exactly what they're doing. This is going. This game is going to sound exactly like like some major AAA games. I'm thinking of, for example, Battlefront, the Battlefront series. The, the one and the two, which, uh, which unfortunately I I, I own. Uh, so Battlefront 2015, Battlefront 2017, are you know let's face it, they are very mediocre games. Uh, but one of the reasons why they they were enjoyable in some ways, and and uh, one of the factors that that triggered replayability was the sound. You feel so immersed. You feel like it's really the Star Wars universe. You can hear all these notes. You just close your eyes. It's like you're really there, and. I, from all the little details I'm hearing and what they're explaining here at the same time, this is the kind of sound experience that we're going to get in Star Citizen, and that is a really amazing. Great job, guys. Again, let's not underestimate the importance of sound uh, in-game. I'm really happy they're talking about that today in ATV. That is great stuff. Oh, yeah. also added thrust and afterburner one-shot sounds to the thrusters rather than just using loops. This really helps to sell the power and the weight of the ship during large accelerations. Oh. <laughs> it's amazing to see how this game is growing you know, month after month after month. Unbelievable. Now, if we enter the atmosphere of Damar, we'll be able to hear the vibration audio and environment feedback audio components working. 
The vibration audio component works by calculating the physical force acting on the ship at the vibration points that we place. These will react to weapons fire, impacts, collisions, thruster force, explosions and so on, but one of the main causes of strain on the ship is atmospheric entry and atmospheric flight. So as the drag acting on the ship increases, so too does the physical force at these points, so they trigger vibration sounds. These will be more intense as the atmosphere is slowing us down and will settle down as we reach a suitable speed for the atmospheric density. Oh wow. So the, the deeper we get into the, the in, into the atmosphere, the more pressure there is. The atmosphere is more dense and the more sound you get and that's how gradually it increases. Wow. Well, flying into the atmosphere of, uh, say, Hurston, for example, is definitely going to be something. Because that's just Daymar. <laughs> hey, we get a little glimpse of uh, the new flight model at the same time while the ship is uh, strafing. Awesome. So for us developers, the new systems offer a lot of advantages, um, and it's mainly down to iteration time. So it now takes about roughly a minute for the initial audio setup of a new ship, which is extremely fast. And all the time that we save by that, uh, we can just put into, well, details, right? Into detail work and focus on the really nice, cool things in the game. Now, let's shift gears and check in with, uh-oh, Steve Bender some animation updates take it away bender all right for animation well let's see what we have here animations is not just about putting in new features right 2019 is a focus on taking the features that we have in game right now polishing them up and making them triple a quality shippable things that are competitive against any other game on the market well, that's that's really great to hear here because, uh, well, in terms of features, we already have tons of, of features um, that have already been completed, but are still a little bit buggy and not satisfying. And you can see that, you know, in all of the videos that you're seeing every day. So uh, I'm really glad to hear again, really glad to hear uh, what I just heard here about. I mean, this is really going to be about polishing and making it look much nicer. It's great to hear that they're polishing. Uh, they're polishing again. We, we're getting you know closer and closer and closer to uh, somewhat of a you know minimal viable product as as Chris would uh, Chris says Chris said in the past before uh, so yeah pretty good pretty good market when we're dealing with feature development we often get to a point on on some of these things where it works but it's not um, it's not really shippable it's something that while you may be able to say pick up a box, <laughs> There's all sorts of bugs with it, right? Glitches, things popping, moving around and stuff like that. And to that extent... You're going to see that in my next video, by the way. Focusing on closing down those sorts of pickups, picking up the boxes, how the, all of the pops and the, and the things that happen right now when you try and do that, we're getting rid of all those glitches so that the team can then lock that down and move on to whatever the next important feature is. in vaulting and mantling so we want to make sure that the player is able to freely move throughout the level he's able to run you know walk run uh jump uh vault over objects jump over vault objects uh, climb up on them and things these are things that you can do for example right now in security pole Corey. uh you have lots of little obstacles uh that 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 where you can you know uh, vault over these um over these obstacles especially at you know level two uh, that's that's what SPK has been mainly designed for, so that you can try out these functionalities. Uh, it will be also interesting to see uh, the evolution and see if it's more fluid or not. Uh, it's also one of the reasons why uh, you know lots of players go to SPK. It really helps the developers test you know all these mechanics. So um, yeah, uh, will be uh, you guys will be the first ones to know when you watch this video uh, on the improvements. I should be doing that a bit more, by the way. Both a, an animation standpoint and an efficiency standpoint. So the ship sequencing idea allows us to now create 
enters, exits, and the control situation. And character killing with letters. To be able to mix and match those. So the animation team is working closely with tech art to be able to set these things up, to be able to get the enter working smoothly with now he gets into the seat and then from there he chooses which control system he goes to and and same thing in the exit as i was playing the game last year and i was talking with a lot of community members we have a lot of uh, community members that are hard of hearing or maybe deaf and they don't interact with uh with the game in the same way that someone who hears hears voice would do so so we engaged one of our community members to work with us on coming up with a series of emotes for American Sign Language so that our community members who are hearing impaired can actually interact and, and role play in the world like how they would want to be doing so. Wait, guys. Um, so I, I would understand if, say, the NPCs would do that. You have you you bring a special code to the NPC, uh, towards the NPC, and the NPC will speak to you in sign language, like you know maybe Reto Bitaglia, Reto Bitaglia or Mal Secker. But here we're talking about player to, to player to player. One of the really neat things that happened this morning is Brian Brewer, our animation lead in Austin, called me up and said, "Hey, you want to see something really cool?" And I was like, "All right, what do you got?" Um, and he showed me the characters actually playing the American Sign Language videos. And I said, you really want to see someone smile? You need to send it to one of our developers who's hearing impaired and just, you know, show him this. Because we've talked about it, I've talked to him about it, and he was like super excited about this, about this being in the game. And... Uh, well, guys, okay. Uh... If this is player to player, now I, I know it sucks um, to to have a handicap, but there's the text chat. Why why do we allocate resources for that? We already have something. That's the text chat. I mean, e even people who are not deaf or or mute. Uh, I mean, I I I don't hear anyone using a, fo a voice over IP when I play. <laughs> no one's using that. So we also we're also using the text chat. So. Why not just leaving the text chat? I don't understand why we spend resources, especially at this moment. It would have been nice if we had done that, you know, during beta or or after release. But right now, we've got so many other things to do, and it's just for a tiny, 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 tiny uh, portion of the uh, of the player base. Uh, I mean, if if guys, please, if if you are uh, if 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 you don't hear so well. Or if you can't speak and you're using the sign language, please tell me in the comments below. If is this something you're looking forward to, or are you happy with the text chat? I, I want to know. I, I really want to know. Uh, that would be really interesting. Again, I'm. I don't have any opinion. Is this good or bad? I just think. Um, I just. I don't know. I don't know. Sure enough, Brian called him, and they looked at the video together, and he was like, "I know exactly what this guy is saying." So that was, I think that was really yeah, but we got the really happy for the, the community to have this opportunity to be able to um, role play and to express themselves in, in the way that they see fit and that, that perhaps um, more is, is related to that. Okay, well, that's, it almost sounds like virtual signaling. I, I, I hate to say these things, but... Is it really necessary? I mean, everybody's using... I, I haven't heard anyone using voice over IP. We're all using the text chat. So I, 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 don't, I, I don't understand that. They should be knowing that too. Um, anyway, cool. Uh, it's cool, but uh, in my opinion, it's, it's, uh, it should not be a priority. Uh, anyway. Adding the American Sign Language is pretty awesome, and the team wants to add facial animations for emotes. So those will be really cool when they're complete. And that does it for us this week. So remember, tomorrow's the last. All right, day. all right. Like well, uh, a very interesting episode today. Um, really like the the update about the sound to me. I was I was quite mind blowing. I'm really looking forward to that. I don't know when it's going to be uh, to to be implemented. Maybe they will uh, tell us. Maybe they will tell us uh, tomorrow in the roadmap. Finally, roadmap update. So uh, you guys will be uh, the first ones to know. I'll be uh, telling you. Uh, in um, in the Roma update video tomorrow. Anyway, um, 
Just tell me what you think, guys, about today's episode in the comments down below. This is The Eradicator. I'm signing out. Yeah, this month we're having a giveaway. Guess what, guys? It's the anniversary of the channel. That's right. I started working on this channel last year at the same period. And I really want to give back, guys, everything you've given to me. All that love, all that support, these comments. Um, really, you're making this possible. And uh, the least I could do is to... Uh, organize this giveaway. I am going to give away a 325A with lifetime insurance. <laughs> I've actually unmelted this one uh, back in January, as you can see. Uh, I already had this giveaway in plan and uh, in mind, and uh, it's happening. So all you need to do is to subscribe to this channel and comment one of the videos that are going to be posted this month in February. What I'm going to do next on March 4th at 2 p.m. Beijing time. Now, mark this down in your calendar. March 4th, 2 p.m. Beijing time. There will be a lucky draw. It will be live streamed. So we can know live which video is going to be the winning video and which comments from that winning video is going to get that magnificent 325 a with LTI. Uh, good luck to everybody. Uh, again, thank you so much. This is the Eradicator, and you are watching my channel. <laughs>